Hi friend, I think everyone knows why we need DC-DC boost voltage converters. They are different but are built according to the same circuit technology. The MT3608 converter is the most popular among them. It's cheap, it has good characteristics and in general this board is often used wherever it is possible. The board is quite economical. The idle current is about 1 to 1.5 mA, but it all depends on the power source. This converter is very popular because of its cost and compact size of our PCB. By the way, about printed circuit boards. If you are fond of electronics or you have a small production, we recommend the services of our partner, GLC, who will manufacture printed circuit boards for you of any shape, complexity and size, up to super complex six complex boards. The company can also make stencils for you for solder paste, which are made on ultra-precise laser machines. The cost of the board starts from just $2 for 10 pieces and your order will be completed in just 24 hours. High quality boards at the lowest cost and as soon as possible. And if you are interested in how to produce printed circuit boards at the GLC factory, you can watch our video on this topic. A link to the video and to the company's website can be found in the description. This converter was modified by many for pulsations reducing. As a rule, reworking concerns only the input and output parts, by addition of smoothing capacitors and so on. Today I want to show you my version of remaking of this board, which will allow firstly essentially reduce the idle current and secondly protect the converter from the short circuits and overload. Very often, a converter of this type is used to feed a multimeter from a low voltage source. This is done to save money on batteries of 6F22 type, but consumption of 1 to 1.5 mA in the idle mode is too much. My version will reduce that current to about 60 microamperes. And it's cool, super economical converter that can be left turned on as much as you want. It consumes almost nothing. Let's consider the original circuit of the converter. We must pay attention to the fourth pin of the micro circuit. This is control of output of the converter. In the original circuit, it is connected to the plus of the source. If you connect it to the minus, the converter will turn off. And the output voltage will be equal to the voltage at the input, minus the drop at the diode. Here is my version of the alteration. The fourth pin is disconnected from the plus and connected to the ground via a 50 kilo ohm resistor. To the output of the converter are connected a current sensor RX and a low power direct conduction transistor. The collector is connected to the fourth pin of the micro circuit. On this board, the fourth pin is connected with the fifth pin. You can disconnect them with the blade of a knife or a needle. How does it work? If pin 4 is shorted to ground, the converter is turned off and consumes a tiny current of 60 microamperes from the source. But on its output there is a voltage that is equal to the supply voltage. If a load is connected to the output, then a voltage drop is formed on the current sensor. This drop is enough to trigger the transistor. Through the open transistor, the positive voltage from the source goes to pin 4. As a result, the converter runs and the output voltage is higher than input. In other words, if there is no load at the output, the converter is turned off and if we connect the load, the converter automatically starts. Now you can watch process. About 4 volts are fed from the laboratory unit to the input of the converter. The red multimeter indicates the current consumption of the converter. Another multimeter indicates the voltage at the output of the converter. As you can see, the input and output voltages are exactly equal and the current is approximately 60 microamperes. The converter is disconnected. Now I connect the load. It's a small incandescent lamp. The converter is instantly started. The output voltage is increased to a predetermined value. I must say a few words about the load current at which the converter will operate. If the load consumes a very small current, for example a multimeter, 
then it is worthwhile to increase the resistance of the sensor Rx. Otherwise, the voltage drop at the sensor may be insufficient to trigger the transistor and start the converter. The resistor also limits the maximum output current. The current limit depends directly on the resistance of the resistor and preset voltage on the output of the converter. A voltage divider can be added to the circuit. This will allow regulating the operation point of the transistor. Divider will change the voltage on the base of the transistor. It is desirable to use a transistor with a large gain, for example, composite. This will allow to reduce the resistance of the resistor and hence the loss on it. The power of the resistor must also be selected depending on the current of the output load. The only drawback of the circuit is the resistor. As already said, on it there will be losses depending on the capacity of the connected load and the resistance of the resistor. The less resistance, the less it will be heated. But if you reduce the resistance very much, the transistor may not work. Once again, I repeat that the resistance of the resistor must be selected based on your needs. I just suggest an idea and an explanation of the principle of work. Please rate this video and share it with your friends if you find it useful. If you have any questions, you can ask them in our groups at Social Nets. In the description, you will find links to this and other DC DC converters. I have to say goodbye until new meetings. With you was Kassian TV.